Hey guys, um, so I'd like to talk about some um, functional programming stuff in React. And um, I built a little, like a really little tiny application, and it's going to be a live coding stuff. I've never done this before, so that's going to be part of my excuse if or rather when something goes wrong. Um, so, probably that's not going to be my excuse for my CSS skills, or rather the lack of it. So I just want to guide you through what this thing does before I want to get into it. So um, what we were going to do, or maybe I should get into the actual app and uh, guide you through. So what we want to do is um, we have a silly little uh, data, which is called uh, comment, and it's saved into local storage. So on the component mount, we want to get that. Obviously, then we want to parse this thing catch uh, if it throws, and then um, for just the sake of doing something, we want to validate that, whether it has the right fields, it's the right type, things like that. Um, if everything goes well, it returns true, not uh, returns false, and if it goes wrong, then what we want to do is we want to reach out to some sort of uh, dummy API, uh, which is in the top of the file I'm just going to show you, and uh, like as a fallback method if there is nothing in local storage. And this console log could be the place to like set state and something like that. You can imagine that I was just lazy enough to console log things out. Um, so we have this little API, which is um, basically just a promise uh, with um, some set timeout. So that's the, that's the application, all it does. And um, what I want to do is um, I want to use these container types that uh, comes with functional programming to like refactor it and um, replace these try catches, um, if statements, and things like that. So now I want to get into. Sorry, it's gonna be a bit complicated. Yeah. So I just want to uh, guide you through that. At the moment, there is nothing in the local story, so I can set a valid uh, thing there, and if I refresh it, uh, you just gonna <coughs> console log things out. If I set a I say uh, it's a math formatted one and I refresh it, it's gonna throw an error, obviously. Um, and if I just simply set it to an invalid one, then it will reach out to the API so we can uh, actually observe that three and a half sex uh, timeout. Uh, at least I hope that's gonna happen. Yeah, so that's it reaches to the API. So um, what we wanna use is like uh, these algebraic data types, which is basically they are um, containing some common um, logic or junction, um, like if else switch statements, or just simply you can uh, delay um, execution of function if it's some side effects, uh, either it's synchronous or asynchronous. So, for the sake of this uh, um, demo, I'm using a library called Crux. Um, there will be some. Uh, Links at the end of this, uh, yeah, uh, there are actually slides, I already forgot that, um, where I will provide a link. Um, so, yeah, um, I just want to go through. So, the first step is um, uh, we are reaching out to the local search. So, that's a side effect already. We are stepping out of the boundaries of the React component. So, the way in functional programming we can work with side effects is just simply put it into a container and delay the execution to some uh, arbitrary time that is later in the, the, the app. So um, there, is a, um, there is a container called async, which pretty much does the same thing. So you can um, construct this async in various ways, but uh, I'm just going to use the uh, default one. And it's going to look like something like a promise, um, with the exception that it's uh, the other way around. So in, in, in promises, the uh, resolve state is the first. So uh, I think it can be said that um, in these uh, container types, they are mostly like right bias. So if something goes well, it tends to be in the right. Uh, and if something goes bad, it tends to be on the left. So what we can do is simply we can resolve the local storage to get item comment. So that is not going to execute. That's not going to execute. It's just going to sit there. So we are the, all, we, all we did is basically we declared what needs to be done uh, sometime later on. 
Um, so I'm gonna use these me type signature stuffs to try to make things uh, like a bit more clear. Um, so and actually we can save it to like a variable or even to a function. Uh, let me call it um, fetch. And this is gonna be a function. So this is gonna be a function that um, we can pass anything and there's like a generic A and it's going to uh, return an async with an error or basically like uh, uh, it can be it can be whatever on the other side. Um, so we can say this like that this is this is an async container or algebraic data type. Uh, that can either er give you back an error or give you back the uh, some generic B type. So that's the again like uh, there is an analogy to the promises. Um, uh, we can have two states, and that's the, the the junction that this container can capture. Oops. Um, so we covered that, but as I said, nothing is happening. So you need to explicitly tell this that please do the stuff. And um, the way to do that is actually you need to call the function, so it returns an async, and you need to call fork on it. And um, this fork is basically the point where you are executing whatever you put inside um, to your um, function declaration. So it can have two states, like it either returns error, so you can console of the error out. Or um, it can have like the, the item, which is called that part success. Um, you can console of whatever comes back. Okay, so if I go back to my slide and I just set value comment and refresh it. Uh, okay, so the line at 107 is the one that with the imperative stuff is uh, doing and as you can see that here it's not um, went through the parsing uh, process so it's just whatever comes back from local storage but actually our code is working so we are at least in pretty good shape but now comes the next part that we need to parse this thing so parsing is a interesting thing because it can throw and um, like we are working with these things um, which based on certain uh, interfaces which derive from math and um, basically you cannot throw inside them because that violates uh, like um, these, these things. So we need to capture this try and catch um, in a more declarative way. And um, so we were using these uh, async types and um, there's another um, algebraic data type called result that pretty much follows some same logic. Instead of it being in result state or in a rejected state, it can have an error state or an OK state. So that uh, basically try and catch um, just in a more declarative way. So we can we can um, use this as, as constructors, like uh, as we did here in the async. Uh, so I can I can go ahead and do something like uh, result of and I can like lift the values into this uh, container just like as if you do it with an array. Uh, but there are alternative ways to do that, um, which built into uh, this library. So there is a function called try catch, which is uh, basically uh, takes so it uses function composition. Whatever uh, function you put into that, it's gonna call that, and re it will return a result. So even if the function throws, it's going to be captured in this function. So, but we first need to define that function, right? So we need to actually create uh, like a parser function, which basically do nothing more than just JSON parse. So now we can put that function in. And uh, this are uh, going to return, uh, we can call it safe parse. <laughs> so save parse the function um, which takes something and tries to parse it and it will return this result uh, known as which is either in an okay state or either in an error state. 
which is pretty good. Now the problem is that um, uh, like we are working with with this async stuff, and we probably in the end we want we might want to reach to the API, which is again an asynchronous test. And also, uh, if you start working with an async and you want to um, use that, you can chain other things onto it. You need to stay in the domain of asyncs. So we need to get this result and somehow uh, make it into uh, an async. So you can either do something, there is this um, Russian dolls, when you have like one container and another container that, that came. So you can either make multiple containers, like um, trying to squeeze things into that, or uh, you can uh, try to map one of these container types to another one. So what you can do is, because there is a there is a parallel in there, so if something is resulted in an OK, then it's probably going to be like result and the other way around. So if you have something that is uh, errored, then it's probably rejected. So, um, and this kind of thing is quite common in when you're dealing with uh, these algebraic data types. And um, that is basically called natural transformation. So you can map from one algebraic data type into another one. And um, there are only, like, uh, you don't have to write something like, um, so if, if you would use if statements, it, it would be something like, if um, result.awk, then uh, probably you want to return an async result. But there is actually, I mean, it's so common, so there is a function for that. So if I, for example, want to do, um, oops, oops. Sorry. So if I want to do um, it's a so that result of async is basically the natural transformation. Uh, so it takes your result, gets the value out of it, and puts it to an async. So now um, what we have here is um, we can chain on that one. So chain basically is like, is like map in some sort. So you receive the value in the container as if you were using arrays. But instead of returning another uh, value, uh, instead, of, yeah, instead of returning another value, then you need to return uh, a value in a container type. So we, ret we get something here and we need to call Save parse uh, with that, or if you wanna just uh, omit things, uh, then you can probably have it like this. So that should do the trick. So now our um, our local storage thing should be like parsed. Yeah. So now you can see that both of them are parsed. So what happens when I try to put a malformatted comment there, hopefully, uh, so we can see one error and we can see another error. So both of the, both the, um, we do the eight, uh, algebraic data types one and the imperative one through the same error. So it's, uh, the, the flow is identical. So now according uh, to the code, the next step is to do that validation so we want to go ahead and check if the body is a string, if the ID is a number, or the timestamp is a number, uh, not or. Uh, so every one of it has to pass. So in order to do that, uh, we're going to reach to another of these type, which pretty much does the same thing. So what we need to do is we need to go with our workflow, if everything goes all right, and just uh, throw away all what we've done if something goes wrong. So we don't really care about uh, the, the, the path when things go wrong. So for, for example, now we care about the error, so we went with the error uh, through if something went wrong, but now we just want to disregard things. And um, um, we want to use a Boolean to actually uh, make these things uh, like these type checks sort of things. So there is a, um, there is a, a container which does the, uh, this thing, is, this is called a maybe. 
Um, so again, as I said, maybe it can be constructed as the same way, like maybe off, which basically lifts the value into maybe. But there are other ways to construct it. Um, and one of the things is called uh, function safe. So safe is, um, again, um, takes, the first argument is a function, which um, takes whatever you pass onto it and return, must return a boolean. And the other is uh, actually a value that you want to check against. So how would it look like? So for example, if you have a function like uh, uh, is number, I actually got imported, I think, is number. So if I pass is number three, then it's going to return a maybe, or just like a just of three. And if I pass like a string, it's gonna return uh, it's gonna return nothing. And there is nothing in there. I mean, there is no like why it's not working. It's just simply nothing. We don't really care about things. So now it's pretty much becoming the same pattern. So we we will receive some value, whatever generic type of value, and uh, we again have this maybe container, but we need an async, right? So we are ended up like we want to have an A with a monadic structure of B, which is like a common pattern here. Uh, but we ended up with the wrong monad. So um, we want to get some the, the value out of this maybe and want to map it to an async. So we're going to use the exact same pattern. But before I do that, actually, let's try to write a validate function. So what we want to do is um, probably want to have a function like that uh, is valid comment. So we definitely want to have the parse value, which is um, A, and um, we need to return some Boolean. Um, actually, let's write out this as a type signature. So, is, uh, So we uh, we definitely receive some object, I think. Oh no, okay. it's just a generic A, and we need to return a boolean. So what we can do is uh, we can have this save. Um, it's uh, this comment, and we need to call this with that A. Um, So now comes an interesting part, how we can do that. We, we don't really have one, these predicates. We actually need uh, three of them. So we, first, we, I want to just uh, write them out, these uh, three predicates. So first of them, we want to have is body string. Um, which takes something. and. Um, we can actually use just simple function composition here. Um, so we want to grab the, and yeah, th so this is going to be, I'm using Ronda as well. I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Ronda, but basically it's like low dash uh, with functional programming um, mindset. So you just uh, grab some functions together. Um, and this is called the body. And um, we need to check that uh, the body is, is string. So is string is uh, just doing the type checks. It is also important from Crux. Um, and the same thing is um, ID number. And I want to use is integer uh, ID. And the last one is um, is uh, timestamp, I think. Is uh, timestamp number. Is number. Is integer. Okay. And um, now we need to um, make all of them pass, and that's going to be the only case when we are considering as a valid comment. 
So the way to do that is um, we can um, use uh, structures, so-called uh, monoids, which you can basically concatenate over them, like uh, you can concatenate over an array. Um, but it's not just arrays that you can concatenate over. It's um, um, basically um, if you define an interface of uh, a concat and um, again some mathematical loads that you can pretty much do things with, with other um, data types. And one of them that this comes uh, is like a pred. So a pred, pred um, takes like a Boolean um, returning uh, function and uh, you can evaluate it some times later on. So if I do something like pred is body string and then I call it run with with the actual uh, with the actual object, it's gonna uh, give me back a boolean result. Now the good part is that uh, I can do something like concat and pred is id number. So I can and I obviously I need to call run with later on. So I can do this, and uh, with, if you have two of them, it's probably fine. But if you have like ten of them, uh, it's going to get tedious. So there is an alternate way to do that, uh, which is a little helper function. If you have a if you have a monoid uh, that you can concatenate over, then you can use mconcat, which basically um, knows how to do these things. So you just need to uh, define a type, and you need to put all your uh, functions that you want to lift into the monoid. So, yes, um, and now you need to run it with the actual object, which I haven't really defined. Okay, so yeah, and there's a typo there. Okay, so now um, I believe it should work. We will see soon enough. Eighty-five. Ah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Also, your previous they return functions and not boolean's. They return functions. Ah, thanks. Thanks. Okay, so now it's going to return uh, uh, a maybe, but now we need to map it to, to an async. So it's pretty much the same thing as uh, we did before. Uh, so we need to, I think it's maybe to async. Okay, so now based on whether it passes all the predicates, uh, it will return either a result or um, or a rejected uh, async. But we need to, um, so we don't really run this function, so we need to chain it to the flow. So if we do our chain, and this command, Maybe or maybe return function first. No, you won't. If you see something wrong, just let me know. Ah, yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, the, the thing is that uh, maybe tracing uh, doesn't know what to do um, when it fails. So we need to specify that when the async is rejected, what should be the value that it contains. So since we started with an error, I just wanna um, be consistent with the. Uh, with the returning type, so not valid uh, <coughs> structure. Okay, so it returns a not valid structure because the local storage is empty. So what if I put a valid one and refresh it? Yeah, so now it uh, returns, uh, I mean both of them, returns the same value. So it seems that 
in Git Posit job. So now the problem is that um, if it's not a valid thing, like our imperative code reaches out to the API, so how we can do that here is basically we can leverage um, uh, something called alt, which basically add another function just like chain, but what it does is returns you the last rejected value or the first result. So it's very handy in our case because it's, uh, it's if something fails, then it's gonna get to the alt, and if it's rejected, it's gonna run it, otherwise it's just gonna um, omit that, so it's an if else statement uh, just for our needs. So I can tell it to alt, and basically what I wanna do is um, reach API, um, and I can define that as a Um, yeah, so again, uh, reach API, what it should be, so it needs to be, again, an async for two reasons. Uh, one reason is that us requires an async because we were working with async models. And then the other thing is that reaching out to the API is promise based, so it needs to be uh, asynchronous. So there is a, a unique constructor that uh, abstracts away all the tedious bits for wrapping the promise, uh, and it's simply called async from <coughs> promise. And all we need to do is return a promise, which is, uh, I think, the way I did it is API slash get. And I think uh, the way I wrote it requires a hard code of five, but um, I mean, that can be changed later on. And, um, yeah. Okay. So now, if I put an invalid comment, then it should um, it should try to fetch it from the promise. Hopefully, we'll see it. Yeah. So both of them arrived at the same time. I mean, both of them had this uh, three and a half second uh, uh, latency. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, we can refactor it so we can use function composition in such a way here. If if you're dealing with the same monads that can they can be like composed together in a separate way. Um, but um, I'm just gonna leave it right here. So that's uh, how it looks. If we omit the fork part, and all the thing that we've done before that is just describing some flow. Actually, we can like even do this. So, 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 so. So you can do something like this. So that's the point when we pull the trigger. Um, everything is self-contained. You can like switch the chains, switch the odds. You can put maps. Uh, you can do a lot of things like via modular. You can uh, basically very easily switch out the predicates. Um, yeah, um, that would be it.